This is the Bulls iconic Evo 2 Speed. And over here, we've got a full suspension version, the iconic Evo TR 2 Speed. $53.99 for this. It's a hardtail, it's got a nice suspension, 120 millimeters, air fork, boost hub spacing with a 15 millimeter through axle. It's got the highest capacity power tube for kind of the last generation of Bosch hardware. And that's important to call out because this is the performance line speed and they don't make a smart system version of that yet. Still fantastic. Gen 4 technology, magnesium casing. This bike weighs about 59 and a half pounds as you see here. And that's with aluminum alloy fender, 65 millimeter width and this rear rack and integrated lights. It only comes in the diamond frame, high step that you see here, but it does come in four different sizes and there's only one color scheme. So you got this matte black with some metallic silver accents. I just love that Bulls, they've added a couple bottle cage mounts down here that this rack is pretty thoughtfully done. You know, it's positioned a little ways back from the saddle. You could do a trunk bag on top. We got the spring latch, pannier bags on the sides, even like a bungee loop down here if you wanted to use it that way. For a speed pedelec, you know, you're, you're going a little bit faster. So having a frame that's stiff like this makes a big difference. Having some tires that are e-bike rated, says e-bike approved up to 50 kilometers per hour. Being a class three, that means up to 28 miles per hour, 45 kilometers per hour. So this is like rated to handle that. And when you come back to like the through axle and everything, it makes sense. It's, it's well specced. Uh, the tires here, these are 27.5 by 2.45, so a little bit wider. And to me, these are hybrid tires. You can see that there's tread. The knobs have some decent spacing between them, but they're, they're a little bit flatter and smoother, so they're gonna be quieter and more efficient on paved surfaces. They do have some puncture protection, as well as that reflective sidewall stripe, which really complements the integrated lights. So that headlight has a little side window, and that rear light, I think it has 24 LEDs. I tried to count them by hand, uh, but it's fairly bright and it's visible from multiple angles. For a bike that's black like this, it's nice to, to stay visible when you're scooting along at high speed. So this is actually an SR Suntour XCR with 35 millimeter stanchions, aluminum alloy, black anodized, beautiful. Just really ties into the paint job. We've got like a lockout adjust. Of course, you can sag this to your body weight or you know the cargo weight of the bike. And that's sort of the air pressure. It's almost like preload adjust in that sense. And then down here, we have rebound. So this is a nice fork. As you're going fast and you're carrying a load, it's important to have good brakes, which they do. They've got these Tektro Draco with a 203 millimeter rotor up front. So extra large, it gives you more surface area for cooling and a better mechanical advantage for stopping that, that larger wheel. Again, this isn't a 29er, but when you put the wider tires on it, that's something to, to, to think about. There's just extra weight and everything. As you stop on a bike, the you know, weight sort of shifts forward. So having a larger rotor in the front makes sense. The rear rotor is gonna be 180 millimeters. Coming back to the fenders for a minute, that's gonna keep you clean and dry. It might protect the, the battery cover a little bit, although, you know, the, the Bosch power tube has like an aluminum alloy housing, and then we also have a plastic cover. I feel like it's, you know, highly water resistant um, and highly dust and ingress protected. This is high quality Bosch stuff. But just thinking about these fenders, leaving these on the bike, if you upgraded the tires to something a little bit knobbier because you were riding off road a little bit more, just be aware that there's it's the clearance here isn't super big so you know maybe it's like 2.25 inch or something depending on how tall the knobs are i really like the fenders and the rear fender integrates with the rack and i think that makes it quieter and sturdier the front fender the support arms they mount directly to the lowers on the suspension fork and so it's really set up well they're not using plastic cuffs that can crack dry out over time or slip up and down the headlight i called out earlier it's pretty bright, I think this is 50 lux, and it points where you steer, but because it's mounted here on the arch of the suspension fork and not uh, at the stem or the handlebar or something, it's actually uh, unsprung. So it's gonna move up and down with the terrain versus up here is gonna be a little cushier. And this is another point I wanna call out because they give you a rigid seat post. Some of their other bikes actually have like a Limotech. It's a dropper post that has some suspension, like 40 millimeters of travel built right in. And you definitely notice it going from that bike to this bike without any rear suspension. Of course you can get SR Sun Tour or Connect or, you know, 
Redshift Sports. There are all kinds of suspension seat posts aftermarket. This is 30.9 millimeters if you want to swap it out. It is going to raise your minimum saddle height a little bit, but this is already a high step. So I just, I just want to call that out. Uh, got kind of a riser handlebar here, a little bit wider. It's kind of that mountain bike setup with these ergonomic locking grips. Love to see that and all the buttons and everything are within reach. They even include a bell. So this is really like a sport utility bike. You know, it's maybe like an adventure touring kind of platform with that high capacity battery. And um, I think it's it's set up pretty well in that sense. But it, of course, it's also designed to handle the higher, the higher speed being a class three. You can see the little sticker down here. So thinking about the drivetrain, we have a larger 42 tooth steel chain ring up front and it uses narrow wide teeth that really lock onto that chain and help keep it from bouncing around or dropping. A little plastic guard on here, maybe not as sturdy as aluminum alloy, but it's gonna save a bit of weight and it keeps your pant leg or dress from touching the chain. So I'm, I'm a fan, um, 165 millimeter crank arms. And that was, it, that was kind of interesting because coming in four sizes, I thought maybe these are shorter depending on the frame size, but this is one of the larger ones, 48 centimeters here. And uh, Chris, the rep from Bulls, he'd said, yeah, no, you know, the uh, crank arms are a little shorter, so you're not, you know, your feet aren't gonna fly off. And I was also thinking it raises the pedals so you don't get ground strikes quite as easily. Or if you're leaning the bike back and forth, you know, think about taking this thing off road. There's like a, an obstacle or something. I, I feel like that's great, you know, and it's pedaling just fine for me. In the back, we have Shimano Dior. It's a derailleur with a clutch, so you can put that in the tight position and the chain might not bounce around as much. It might not make contact with that right chain stay, but they do have a plastic sticker to protect the paint. I love to see that. And there's a decent spread here. This is like 11 to 46 tooth. So you see that really large sprocket in the back. It's just extra big and that's for starting and climbing. And it makes a lot of sense, especially since this is a, a larger chain ring. Um, it, it kind of offsets that and makes it easier to, to pedal with. I also really like the shifters up here because you've got a two-way high lever. You can push it or you can pull it. And then we have a multi-shift low lever. So I just dropped three gears right there. And anytime you're shifting, the Bosch controller, the motor controller is actually listening to your rear wheel speed, pedal cadence and pedal torque over a thousand times per second. And it's supposed to ease off a little bit when you're shifting. And that way you won't you know, bend the teeth on this or damage the chain quite as easily. Because there's a lot of power coming from this motor. It's the Bosch Performance Line speed motor. Gen 4, magnesium housing, super light. I think this is like 6.39 pounds. And it's just very smooth and dynamic and responsive. I think it's it's one of the best motors out there. It is gonna use energy a little faster than some of the you know, lower rated motors that aren't speed, that aren't high torque, but it still does a really good job. 85 Newton meter rated on that. So it's, it's just as high as like their CX mountain bike motor. And then the speed sensor for the rear wheel is built into this disc brake rotor. There's a little paddle there that passes by. Some of the older bikes, you'd see like a little magnet on the spoke that could get bumped out of position. It could get dirty. So I love to see that. And I also like the kickstand. It stays plenty clear of the left crank arm. It's adjustable length. It's just great. And the bike really doesn't rattle a whole lot when riding, but I have noticed occasionally you'll get a piece of gravel kind of up into the you know, aluminum alloy fender and you'll hear it tinking along. Um, I also like the saddle. This is Selly Royale, but it's branded for bulls, iconic. You'll see a lot of stuff on these bikes like sticks or ride, like the rims down here. And those are, I think those are all bulls parts as well. Chris, you know, we were talking a little bit about the company before and it sounds like 1997 is when it started. It's a German company. Yeah, mid 1990s, um, started through a cooperative, uh, largely known as ZEG. Yeah. Um, and then we cut our teeth really in the mid 2000s uh, in the marathon mountain bike race scene, races like Cape Epic. Uh, we dominated for many, many years, still very competitive there. So it's kind of like cool. the Tour de France of mountain biking. Yeah, well, it's great. I mean, all these European companies that have this like rich heritage of, yep. of racing and really high quality stuff. It's cool to see so many bikes that they overlap a little bit. Like this is still kind of adventure touring. It uh, could be off-road. You could also upgrade the tires, but you got full suspension. And right. then down here we've got, and, and it's a speed pedelec, full suspension speed pedelec. That's Absolutely. rare. And then we got the hardtail version that we're looking at here. And then we looked at another one. It was like the Evo 1 750 wave before. Mm -hmm. 
and that one's just, it's the CX motor, so class one. Bulls has tons of dealers globally, but we're here in the United States, so. Yeah, we have 200 in North America right now. So That's fantastic. we're looking to grow all the time. We really want you to have a great experience, um, and we really believe in the local bike shop, so. Yeah. The, they're your best point for a sale. Me too. You know, back at electricbikereview.com, I have all the specs for this, and I've got like a comparison tool, and I cover a lot of the Bulls products. I, you know, it's a high quality thing. You find it at, at the store, so I'm hoping it's helping more people um, who, are, who are thinking about these bikes. It's a little more expensive, but compared to some of the other European brands, Bulls is actually a little bit more affordable yep. sometimes, so that's, that's nice to see. Any other highlights for this particular bike that you want to call out before we jump into the display? Overall, the Speed Series is just great for long range commuters. Uh, I commute on one of these. Uh, yesterday I did for 17 miles. Wow. Uh, and it's so nice <laughs> to be able to fly, um, keep up with those kinds of things. Um, so yeah. yeah. Speed is really good for, for long term commuters. Yeah, being able to keep up with traffic, it's, maybe you're not quite as annoying. It, it almost commands a little more respect. Absolutely. And I'm a fan of that too. A lot of roads around here that have that designated bike lane on the street, and that's perfect for like a class three like this. Yep. So um, I think that's pretty cool. Actually, I want to show the battery and the charger. So we'll go do that and then we'll do the display. This is a power tube. It's a power tube 625. Still very high capacity. It's integrated right into the frame, a little bit lighter than the 750. And in order to charge that, we're gonna use the standard four amp charger. I really like this thing. Weighs about a pound and a half. It's got a proprietary plug point at the end that's really clear and really sturdy. So if it gets bumped out of position, these don't break very easily. And it gets pretty compact because of the removable wall side. So four amps is great versus two amp chargers I see from a lot of other companies. You can charge the battery on or off the frame, which is really nice. You know, you just plug the bike right in. And I, I really like where this is positioned. You got this little cover here, plastic piece that sort of flips up like this plug it right in. It's not low down where it could get dirty or where you're gonna bump your head on the handlebars or something. It's excellent position. And right next to it, there's also uh, the locking cylinder. So that's fantastic. It's all right where you'd want it. I, to me, this is like perfectly executed. Chris, you got the keys for this yep. thing? Yeah. First and it, we'll uh, pull off the battery cover down here. Oh yeah, we got that plastic cover. Weighs less than half a pound and it's pretty generic. So if this ever got lost, you needed to replace it, you could. I want to mention that you can take this off without unlocking it. it. It doesn't really secure to the frame quite as sturdily or safely as the battery. So just keep an eye on this thing. And these are ABIS keys. So it's got the key code. You can match that to a folding lock and mount it to one of those two bottle cage positions there. There's the 625. I think this is like seven and a half pounds. Got the plug port at the base and the little LED charge level indicator. So in terms of battery care, you wanna keep this in a cool, dry location. Keep it at least 50% charged if you're not gonna use it for a while. You don't wanna let it get all the way down to zero. Sometimes with a high capacity battery like this, you might not charge it after every ride, but keep in mind that if you're in a really hot garage, that's gonna degrade the cells over time. And extreme cold can temporarily stunt your range, so you just won't, you won't go as far. Um, yeah, I, I think all in all, it's a pretty good setup, but when it comes to remounting the battery, it can be a little quirky. I really appreciate your help, man. This is of course. kind of a two-handed thing. He's lifting it from below, he positioned it, and he actually, he, he used the key a little bit to make it possible to interface. Like you have, you have to actively twist, is what I'm saying, and then you hear it click and it's in place. A little quirky, but I, Bosch must have done that for a reason, and it, probably add some additional level of security, really firmly mounts into the frame. That, that weight is right where you want it to, low and center on the bike. Okay, so we're up here. I press the power button on the display, power, but this is actually removable. It's magnetic, you can take it off. I believe it has like Gorilla Glass, pretty tough display on this. And one of the things I really like about the original kiosks is that down here, there's a little micro USB charging port and Bulls has a case for, for your phone and it could actually kind of swivel mount here. So imagine that you have your phone here, you got the display, you got your button pad. That's pretty cool. And you tap into that high capacity 625 watt hour battery pack. Um, there are a bunch of different readouts on the Kiox and I have done separate videos. Bosch has some good stuff, but we'll just jump through this real quick. There's left and right. So I'm gonna take us back 
to maybe this this first dot you can see the power that the bike's exerting and what you're pedaling how much power you're exerting you got a speedometer down here as you go plus or minus it's going to change the color and those are the different assist levels so there's eco tour is blue sport is purple and turbo is red and that's pretty cool you just kind of click through so even if you can't read it you get a sense based on the color i love that there's a battery charge level in a percentage it's very precise but we also have sort of a range estimate down here so if i change from tour down to eco the range dynamically updates and you're like oh i've still got you know 39 miles in this at 55 percent charge that's really useful we go through here trip distance trip time my power cadence this is a super high cadence motor it can support over 120 rpm so you can really fly and without worrying about losing support and that's important if you're getting ready to climb a hill and you shift down you don't want to lose support even heart rate okay so th there's a walk mode button plus minus left right select it's like this is this is pretty intuitive there is a separate app called the bosch e-bike connect app chris has got that pulled up and you can see there's a map you could type in your destination then it helps route you there turn mm -hmm. by turn you've got sort of a feed of news there's activities that's like the rides and stuff that you've done so we can see we've done some rides here you get your stats you can get some diagnostics about your bike mm -hmm. and then the heart rate monitor thing is cool because you can actually get some ride performance feedback correct yeah so you would hook up your uh your heart rate monitor bluetooth heart rate monitor to your phone and then it would broadcast how it's how your heart's doing on the display very um, cool so you've got a watt meter and a power or and a heart rate monitor and that's awesome i mean that's there's a lot of options between just the default displays or that so with that said maybe it's a good chance to just hop on this thing and do some riding i like to do testing in turbo it's the most responsive and you'll get a, a better idea for how loud the motor can get and we're in perfect terrain here it's not like too loose you don't need deep knobs, but you still want an off-road capable bike, and this suspension fork is just doing great. Super responsive, and the brakes, especially with that large 203 millimeter front rotor, I have pretty good control here with just, you know, one hand. Beautiful. I'm always listening for like the fenders, trying to get a sense for how rattly that's gonna be when I'm riding and they're doing pretty good. Very good. I find myself standing like that a lot just so I'm not getting like you know, banged around. I would probably look at a suspension post if I was doing a lot of off-road riding. But this is still, this is really plush. This is really nice feeling. And there's a decent tire pressure range. So you can lower the pressure a little bit to give some comfort, but then you're trading efficiency a little bit there too. From here, you can see that 42 tooth steel chain ring. It's a little bit larger than the iconic Evo 1750, the class one version. So the, the larger chain ring slows your cadence and it gives you uh, the potential to to pedal at those higher speeds without beating eggs. I'm gonna shift through the gears a little bit. We're gonna ride through this terrain, maybe get to some paved surfaces. I'm gonna be in the highest level of assist so you can hear that motor. But it's just very, it's very responsive, you know? As soon as you push, you're getting power right away. And when you ease back, it, it responds very naturally. Speed Pedelec. Oh, he's beating us. <laughs> That's awesome. Really solid, stable at speed too. The rear light looks nice. <laughs> All right, it said I was doing 900 watts of my own power there. So I really? as hard as I could. Nice. Let's take it back to the dirt.
Well guys, that is the Bulls Iconic Evo 2 Speed. For the full written review on that, check out electricbikereview.com. I've got all the stats and everything that I measure by hand. I also have a comparison tool, so you could look at this bike or maybe look at the full suspension or just all kinds of options back there. And there's also some forums, you know, there's comments on YouTube and forums on the site. And that's a good chance to talk to people who actually own the bike and they've maybe they found some really good compatible accessories or they have some feedback on, you know, how to, how to really optimize the settings. I hope this helps you. This is just a free review. Uh, big thanks to Bulls for, for bringing the bikes out and Chris for hanging out with me. Love you guys. Ride safe. We'll see you next time.